Welcome to a discussion of the end games of the 11th world champion Robert James, also called Bobby Fishy. The main source is my book Bobby Fischer, pub published by Russell Enterprises 2009, but I have of, also, of course also used Fischer's masterpiece, famous masterpiece, My 60 Memorable Games, Kasparov's volume 4 of his great predecessor series on Fischer, and uh, Hübner's chess base CD on Fischer and many other sources which are mentioned in the file on tradi uh, in traditional format on the DVD. Fischer's technique was excellent and many were reminded of the great third world champion José Raúl Capablanca. He almost played the end games like a machine. Even a slight initiative was often deadly in Fischer's hands as he fought really to the end. He almost never agreed short draws, but just kept on playing and fighting and earned many points thanks to his remarkable handling of the final phase of the royal game. He even learned Russian to study the premium material of the time in the uh, language, uh, especially, of course, the magazine Shakmati in the Soviet Union, in the SSSR, which was uh, <coughs> you know, premium material at the time, as the Soviet Union was the dominant power in chess after the Second World War. So it was really amazing that a player from the United States could almost single-handedly, okay, of course he had some help, that's clear, but, but not as much as the players from the Soviet Union who had s a great support from the state itself could take away the highest chess crown. And yeah, one, one major part of Fischer's strengths were indeed his endgames. I have divided the material for this DVD in four sections. In the first, I will look at a few theoretical endgames to show that he knew many of them by heart and that it helps to know theoretical endgames. The second sections on rook endings. Okay, they just occur so often that it is easy to find many instructive rook. It was very easy to find many instructive rook endings by Fischer. Then the third section is in a way a Fischer speciality. The end game rook and bishop against rook and knight, where the side with the bishop has the advantage. This whole end game type is even sometimes called a Fischer endgame. So, of course, here I have to make a more detailed look, especially into his amazing wins against Timonov and Petrosian in the third section. And the first, uh, fourth section, I will look at a few famous endgames and riddles which have already fascinated generations of analysts since then it yeah I hope to shed some light on on the riddles and mysteries but okay now let's start with the theoretical end games time and Fisher Buenos Aires 1960 and yeah Bobby with black to move and yeah time of me have hoped here to to win playing against the relatively young American and Often the end games are not the strength of the use, but for Fischer it was completely different. Bobby drew easily. Okay, Bishop E1 is more or less forced, so that Bishop takes B4 can be answered by taking the pawn. But okay, let's go a bit ahead. Here it is relatively clear the stopping diagonal must be seized by the Bishop. And against the threat, bishop c5, black must play bishop b4, time enough went back, and now bishop d6 or bishop a5? First crucial question. Bishop a5. Bishop d6 loses. Now white wins the all-important tempo, and black's king is not in time anymore. Yeah, and now White's king can force the bishop to leave this stopping diagonal, and now black loses, because the b-pawn will come to b7, and then the stopping diagonal 
B8, A7 is of course too short. Yeah, this is not possible to stop B6. And yeah, this means that uh, black is lost. As one of the stopping diagonals is too short. And black's king too far away. So Bobby pay bishop a5. And state now on this stopping diagonal. And here comes the, the next question. Where, where to go with black's king, which is the right direction in principle. The king must come behind the pawn to c4 in the end, black's king. So king f4 and after king d5 then king e3 to come king d3, king c4. And this will then reach a uh, central Rene's drawing fortress like setup. This is theoretical position Fisher knew and you should know as well. And now Black's king is always in time <coughs> to reach a version of Santorini's draw. Both uh, stopping diagonals are long enough. We will see in one moment. Yeah, bishop c7. And now both stopping diagonals are longer than three squares. And the kings are in the typical Santorini formation. So this is uh, fortress and a draw was agreed. After the game, um, Taimanov asked, Bobby, how did you manage to save the situation and do it so quickly? I didn't have to do any thinking. Seven years ago, your magazine, Shak Matni SSSR, printed a detailed analysis of the Zen game, in brackets by Averbach, so, and I just knew all the variations. Yeah, this is really amazing. Bobby had studied uh, this endgame at such a young age and still knew everything by heart. And I think that this shows already that knowing endgame theory does help. And once you can master and understand it, you will not forget it. And this doesn't change over time, like maybe opening theory, but this part of endgame theory, of course, is completely... Uh, stable and sometimes young players don't like to to do so much research and and learning by heart and looking at endgame theory but Bobby was different from the beginning he uh, had started to go deep into the details of the endings and I think this also helped him a lot on his road to reach the title of world champion